Good morning and Merry Christmas. Good morning. Um, welcome to everybody today. Um, much nicer out there after the last couple days, that's for certain. Um, congratulations to Joanne Gruber. There's another great granddaughter in the family. Uh, Joanne, there's no picture yet, but we'll get to that. Uh, next week, Sunday, New Year's Day, come early. The service will start at 11, but the doors are opening at 10 for coffee and goodies. So just keep that in mind. And our, new, our services are now on a new YouTube channel. Um, it's in the bulletin, the link and address and all of that, as some technical difficulties have had to be sorted out with all of that, so I understand that it's much better now. Okay. We will uh, commence with the service now, and we're going to do the lighting of the candle. Today we light the Christ candle. John 1 verse 3 to 5 says this about Christ, the light of the world. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. This fulfills the prophecy from Isaiah 60, 1 to 3, which also speaks of the coming light of the world. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord raises, rises upon you. His glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your dawn. And finally, Re Revelations 21, 23 verse, and 24 looks forward to the day when Christ's light will fill the whole world. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. Nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor upon into it. And at this time we welcome um, Doug to the pulpit who will lead us in our service today. The birthday boy. Let's sing. You know, you really know how to make someone feel special and awkward at the same time, <laughs> you know. Um, today is a day of celebration, a birthday party, if you will. Um, today, we have lit the Christ candle, and if you had a moment, you might have scanned through the order of worship uh, this morning and have realized that you will be singing a lot, not just happy birthday, so uh, we're going to be lifting our voices in praises, in songs, and in hymns that proclaim Christ's birth. And as you sing, it's 
kind of part of the message. Take note of the words and the thoughts of the songs and also of the hymn writers. This morning, I would like to invite you to a manger to see the baby Jesus born to us as we celebrate Christ's birth through a song, through scripture, and through an exhortation. May we be drawn together as a family of God, and may we again look to Christ for hope, love, joy, and peace. I trust that the Spirit will move in your hearts and that there will be something for the young, something for the old, and also something for those in between. Um, Please rise as you are able, whether that's in body or in spirit, as we enter this time of worship. Yes, that. Um, The throne of God is changed today to a manger. Let us take a moment to still our hearts and minds and focus on the Christ child. Let's take a moment and pray silently. So, as we set the Christmas story in a context, we first read from various parts of Scripture. Um, First, we read from Genesis 1, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And then we read from the prophet Isaiah, who declares in chapter 9, verse 2, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. And then finally, in the Gospel of John, we read in chapter 1, verses 4 to 5, In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. It is that light that we extend our hands in praise, and that we lift our voices in song, and then also ponder the birth of the Son of God. Our greeting comes from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians in chapter 4, where we read in verse 3 to 6, And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of believers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as our, your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Amen. Because that's how we want it to be. Now, we have the opportunity to lift our voices for our first two opening songs, um, Joy to the World, The Lord has come.
And now let us sing with the angels from the realms of glory. So today, even though it is Christmas Day, we take time to look back at the fall of mankind. One person brought the knowledge of good and evil and death. The prophets were God's way of drawing people from evil to good, to call people to repent of what is evil instead of cling to what is good. A baby why does God take on human flesh? If God is to have a son, would it not make more sense to have the Christ child born of a present-day king? You know, for political influence. If God is to have a son, would it not make more sense to have the Christ child born of a present-day Sadducee or a Pharisee? You know, for religious influence. God did, however, send his son to a son and daughter whose heritage is from the line of David. God did send his son to parents that love the Lord. Mary's relatives had priestly ties. So we see God's son starts life right where God needs him. Let's pray. Lord, you have given us a Savior, and we remember today how you became flesh. We see it afresh today. We realize that we think of your coming to this world differently every year. This year, open our heart to your will. 
open our eyes to see your Son. Amen. And let us lift our voices in response. Come down, O loves divine. So now we step into God's will, um, the portion of a service where we contemplate um, God's will for our lives, especially here on Christmas Day. God's will was to form mankind in his image, not spoken into being, but formed with his hands. And his breath was used to give the breath of life a crafty serpent in the Garden of Eden, enticed this couple to be like God. And that is the fall. They were embarrassed, so they hid. God sought out the couple after they fell, even when he commanded, don't eat it. And they broke the rule. Instead, God provided clothing for them, which required a sacrifice. God promised that there would be eminent enmity between the serpent and the woman, between the serpent's offspring and hers, he will crush the serpent's head and the serpent will strike his heel. We sing in response of the Father's love begotten. Mm.
now we have an assurance because today is the day that we commemorate that God's plan from the beginning is now made flesh. God sought a couple to raise his child. God clothed his child in cloths. God's promises, God's prophecy, God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so we sing standing in God the Father, I believe. And as you are seated, I'd love for the kids to come forward because we got to do a little pretending and we get to do a little story time. So if you could come up here, I have brought straw bales. See these guys right here? Can you guys pick a bale? You got to pick one. And then if you want to get comfy for this story time, there are blankets there. The big ones you're going to need to share and the smaller ones you can keep. So you could share a bale. Come on up here. We're gonna get around this manger, okay? You think we can do that? Yeah, get your hay bale, get your straw bale. Let's get her done. Right on. I get to, I get to sit over here. Now, you guys are gonna have to see a picture, so don't sit too far away. Yeah, so you guys sit together on a pillow. You guys all got, yeah, we're ready? Story time, good, good. Grab a pillow, come on in. Come on in, sit down. Yeah, come over here. Perfect, come. Ready? All right. So this, I'm so excited. 
about Christmas time, I get, I'm going to read a story for you guys. This is a book called All is Bright, and it's a devotional journey um, to color my way to Christmas. Um, it's written by Nancy Gunthrie and uh, illustrated by Lizzie Preston. Um, some pictures are colored by Doug Bonvinny. So I didn't get all the way there, but uh, you can see I got a couple colored, hey? Because it's color my way to Christmas. So I really wanted to do this Christmas one, but I had to do some writing for a sermon instead, so I couldn't get the color. So this is a scene for us with the manger, and we're going to read from Luke chapter 2. At that time, the Roman emperor, Augustus, decreed that a census should be taken throughout the entire Roman Empire. This was the first census that was taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph and Mary were descendant of David, they got to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee, and he took with him Mary, who, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger. See that? Because... There was no lodging for them that was available. That night, there were shepherds staying in a field nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. And suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory sh shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all the people. The Savior said, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others the armies of heaven, praising and saying, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all those things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went, went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just the angel had told them. And now we get to sing Away in the Manger. You can say it. Don't say it. Just say it.
I just want to point out one thing. I think I did a pretty good job of concentrating while there was a whole pile of access there. And I'm so glad you guys are so well behaved. <laughs> I hope. Um, this morning, before we open God's word, let us uh, have a prayer for understanding. Let's pray together. Lord God, you are good and you are great. Once again, we get to commemorate the birth of a, a baby, and we're just so excited because we know that this baby you have given us so that we have a chance to come before you, have a mediator, have someone that can look out for us and share life with us. We ask, Lord, that you put your hand of blessing on all our hearts that we may receive the words that I have prepared, and may you uh, grant your blessing on us this day. Lord, we pray this in your name. Amen. So we open up scripture to Luke 1. This is, this is the, the pre-story for all those, uh, you know, storytellers and um, writers. We read the Christmas story, but now we read a little bit before that. This is what happened a few days earlier. So we turn to Luke 1, verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. No word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Well, in the Advent weeks here uh, preceding Christmas, uh, we explored what God is like. And today we get to celebrate God being human. God taking on flesh. And we're going to explore what this means, that God is a baby. In our scripture reading, we read that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Jesus is born of the Virgin Mary. From that, we can look at the benefits that we receive. The, result, the, the results are a hope, a love, a joy, that we can tell the world that God is a baby and the baby's name is Jesus. There are mixed emotions that come when a woman finds out that she's pregnant. And we just think about all the people in our lives that have been pregnant. Various emotions are noted for sure. And today, our text also shows that. Mary is betrothed to Joseph and being told that she is going to have a baby is a troubling thing. Back in Mary's day, when you were betrothed, the betrothed couple had an arrangement. He would be preparing a place, a home for her, and she would be preparing herself for him. So to hear news like, you're going to have a baby, what would that have been on joyful side of emotions? 
Absolutely not. Mary would have been devastated and distraught, for this kind of news would be grounds for, for Joseph to break off the betrothal. Instead of an exciting emotion, this news troubled Mary. Thankfully, God sent the proper messenger with the proper message to explain this amazing pregnancy. How, you ask? Well, let us look at what the messenger says. Not what I say. The Holy Spirit will come upon Mary and the power of the Most High will overshadow her. This takes Mary's troubled mind, swimming with a lot of questions, and gives an answer. This messenger helps her to take her troubled mind to a frame of mind that is accepting of God's will, the miracle of life. We talked about this earlier, didn't we? God formed Adam and Eve. But did Adam and Eve have a belly button? God formed the first of mankind from the earth and then Eve from Adam's rib. Now, after mankind was formed, how many babies were formed by God? There is a hint. David says it in Psalm 139. You knit me together in my mother's womb. God formed every human. Should the Son of God be any different? No. God again forms his Son with the hands of the Spirit in the womb of Mary. So God takes on flesh, the blood of the Virgin Mary, through the operation of the Holy Spirit, and then, once again, a baby is formed. So, by way of the seed of David, so like unto mankind in all things, sin accepted, is our God made flesh. With God's hands, Adam and Eve were formed. With his breath, they were given life. So Jesus is formed in the womb. And the time came for the baby to be born. It came to my attention the other day that Mary and Joseph did not have a sterile environment. Uh, they were not at a hospital. They didn't even get the chance to be at an inn. There weren't servants to fetch hot water, clean towels. Instead, they could only find lodging in a stable, a smelly, poopy stable. People did not witness this momentous occasion. Animals did. Water breaks, contractions start, and then a baby's cry is heard. The umbilical cord which allowed the Christ child to grow is cut. It's no longer needed. The baby is wrapped in cloths, and there you have God with a belly button. And Mary and Joseph give the baby the name Jesus, just as the messenger had instructed. Jesus is born from the, the line and lineage of David and of God. He is God's firstborn, a son. He is God's unblemished provision to us to fulfill a role of sacrifice of a sacrificial person to draw us closer to God. Today, we have the invitation once again. Let us gather around this feeding trough, this, this manger, and discover anew this baby. Who knew the destiny of that child? Would you guess that he was sent to, to crush the serpent's head? Jesus started life just like we did. Jesus took on flesh so that he could mediate. He has lived a life and so knows the struggles that we face at every stage. It is through his perfect holiness that he can cover in the sight of God our sins, wherein we were conceived and brought forth. 
Jesus' dad ensures his holiness. Jesus' mother ensures his humanness. And together, both God and man, he is now mediating on our behalf. So the Lord Jesus gives us two things. One, first, a means to come before a holy God because he is our mediator. Second, he covers our sins with his blood to atone for the wrong, crushing sin and death on our behalf, crushing the head of the serpent. And so today, we share in the birth of a savior, Jesus. We are able to share in the love of God, a love that brought him to a stable, born and then placed in a manger, born to be God with a belly button, born to offer his life as a ransom for all sinners that confess his name as Savior. This birth gives us hope because the devil, the serpent's head, is crushed. Sin and death are conquered. Our love for this baby grows as the baby grows. Our love changes, it adapts, it matures as we read about the life of this baby. We realize that his love paid the debt. He frees us from sin and death. And so we wait in, in, in anticipation for when he comes again. This birth gives us joy because a savior has been born in the town of David. You will know because the baby is wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Today, we celebrate the birth of a savior. Our joy is for a God with us, God with a belly button. Let us share that hope, that love, and that joy and through our sharing of our hope, love, and joy in Christ, may there also become a peace to mankind. Amen. Because that's how we want it. And so, let us pray. Lord God, as we contemplate different things on this Christmas day, not just the gifts and not just family, but you as our Savior. We pray that we may share that joy and love and hope that we have in Jesus with our loved ones around us, whether that's neighbors or our family. In your name we pray. Amen. And let us sing a song of response, infant holy, infant lowly, and let us stand to sing.
because it's such a wonderful, joyful day, we also give of our gifts. And so we pray to uh, God for a blessing on these gifts. So let us pray. Lord God, once again, what we bring to you is just a fraction of what you have given to us. Lord, may you multiply the gifts, not only for this church and the budget and the missions that we support here locally, but also for World Renew. Lord, there are many ways to engage your people, and there are many things needed, resources and uh, gifts needing to develop different places and activities. And Lord, through these gifts, may love, mercy, and justice and also compassion be sent out from this place to the world around us. In your name we pray. Amen. And let us sing, O come, all ye faithful.
And now we have a moment again to pray to our God for the prayers of this congregation. Um, As with every festive celebration, we're always reminded about those that we have lost, the empty spaces at our table. But remember, that just means God's table is getting more full. So as we come to this point in our service, join me in, uh, in our prayer. Lord God, we are so thankful that you sent a son, that you worked in Mary's heart to be the mother of your son. We thank you, Lord, for the gifts of children, for the gifts of life. Lord, we, we all don't know how long we get to be your servants here on earth. And Lord, because of that, may we be grateful, giving, selfless, and caring to all those around us. Lord, there are countless needs, not only in our congregation, but in our community, in our world. And Lord, sometimes we bury our heads, we get frustrated, we cry out to you to say, why, Lord? Why this pain? Why this suffering? Why this hate? Why this sin? fullness. And Lord, we're reminded today it's because that we fell, that we didn't listen to your initial command in the garden. However, you found it right to send someone to look after that for us. And so we give you praise this Christmas day for a new Savior that is born, that we remember that He was born many years ago, and he is with you now, along with our loved ones that have died. And so we ask for comfort, for your care, for your love, for all those in our congregation. Lord, we're dealing with so many different things, getting older, having sores, having limbs that don't want to react the way we want them to think that we're younger even though we are older. And so, Lord, we thank you for the life you've given us. May we be a blessing in this Christmas time to those around us. Will you give us all that we stand in need of? And may your work continue to go throughout this world. Lord, you are good and you are great and most worthy of praise. And Lord, we pray this all not because we're worthy of it, but because Jesus is our mediator. Amen. And now, as we prepare our hearts to leave this place, we get to stand and sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
And now, I'd love to give you God's blessing for this week to come. And, we, and I uh, am reading from Matthew 28. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to this Christ child. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything Christ has commanded you. And surely, Christ will be with you always to the very end of the age. People loved by God, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine towards you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Let us lift our voices in song one more time, singing glory to God. Mm, 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 mm. 